Good morning folks, welcome back to Higher Chemistry. We're going to have a quick look at oxidising and reducing agents today. Um, don't mind the blue clamp, I'm not in my usual filming location. Uh, so, uh, split it into two parts here guys, I want to do an N5 recap of what you need to know and also the new Higher content. This is SQA pages 55 through to 58. Um, it's, uh, well, let's start with this one, N5 recap, what are you supposed to know from this? You're supposed to remember the oil rig thing for starters. So oxidation is loss of electrons uh, and reduction is gain of electrons. How do you spot whether a given reaction is oxidation or reduction? Some people, at National 5 you could get away with a simple version. For example, if you had Fe3+, plus, plus an electron, going to Fe2+, plus, that's fine and dandy. You can see that the charge here is being reduced. And that was one way of telling it, but you can't apply that to the more complex ones, I'm afraid, that we get a higher. Have a look at this one. I'm going to pause this so you don't have to waste your life watching me write it out. So let's have a gander at this one here. This is more like a higher one. So we've got Cr207 plus 14 hydrogen ions plus 4 electrons. Um, just realised I've copied that down wrong. Silly old fool. Six electrons, my apologies. Didn't think it looked quite right. Makes two... CR3 pluses, and you cannot tell from these charges, you just can't. Instead, there is a dead giveaway as to whether this is oxidation or reduction, and it's to do with the location of these electrons. If you find the electrons on the left of the arrow, then they are joining up with everything else on the left, and reduction is gain of electrons, so if you see electrons on the left, it is a reduction reaction. And of course, vice versa. If the electrons are on the right of the arrow, it must have been an oxidation because the things on the left lost these electrons to over there. So don't look at the charges anymore. Look at the location of the electrons. That's our first refinement from N5. The other thing you need to do from N5 is be able to combine uh, an oxidation with a reduction. Um, and once again, I'll pause this and I'll knock a couple up for them. Okay, so in green, we've got our oxidation. Again, because the electrons on the right, we're turning 10-2 into 10-3. And in black, we have our reduction, um, which involves this chemical here. Now, if you are a, at, if you're at Melbourne, you probably haven't done this yet, um, because we do unit 1, then unit 3, then unit 2. But if you're in another school, then you might recognise that as being dichromate, one of the oxidising agents. Oops, I just said one of the key phrases, didn't I? An oxidising agent for organic molecules. Anyway, we're going to combine these two together to get an overall reaction. This is something similar to N5, only a lot more complex. But you still need to be able to do it. And the key thing, of course, is that if you are losing one electron here and you're gaining six electrons here, that is not going to be happy. So you need to be losing and gaining the same number of electrons. Very often in an exam, they might do something wicked like have five there, five and six, and people freak out. That's okay. Just multiply the top one by the... You find the lowest common denominator. Or if you want to, uh, you can multiply that by the, the appropriate fraction. You can have fractions and multiplies. It's not a problem. Um, so what we're going to need is six here, aren't we? And six here. So we're going to squash everything together on the left. And we're going to end up with... Um, actually, two seconds we're going to end up with. So that's the combined version. Don't let all these hydrogen ions and waters confuse you. Excuse me. As I was saying, for we rule interrupted by the pseudo bell that somebody seems to have installed at Melbourne here. Personally, I think it's come from 1950s experiments on psychological torture. It's that annoying. Anyway, so we've got um, this whole equation here. Don't let the 14H pluses and other weird things like seven waters put you off. In the very near future, we'll have a look at where they've come from. It's part of the new higher content. That's why they've all, all appeared in addition to the old fashioned simple ones. But just squash everything together on the left, everything together on the right. Don't forget, of course, classic noob mistake would be to forget to cancel out the electrons. They cannot be shown as part of the overall equations. No electrons present. I have in the past seen a horrible example where there were like seven waters on the left and maybe two water. Sorry, seven waters on the right. Apologies. And two waters on the left here. And they expected you to cancel that down to just five waters on the right. Um... But that's basically N5 recap, guys. Quick definitions of oil rig, a better way to recognise reductions and oxidations, and also squashing together an oxidation and a reduction by equaling up the number of electrons, multiply the whole thing, and then squash everything together. 
Okay, newer content then, guys, for hire. These things called agents, so oxidizing or reducing agents. What are they about? They are an interesting way of looking at it. Do you know what we'll do? Hold on two seconds. Let me conjure up a very simple redox reaction, first of all. So we've got magnesium uh, going to form magnesium 2 plus by losing electrons, so that, of course, is an oxidation. And we've got copper 2 plus ions gaining two electrons to form copper, elemental. I have skipped the... Don't shout at me if you're a chemistry teacher. I know I've skipped all of the state symbols because they're not massively relevant for this for the moment. We'll come back to them later. Now, if you look at the, the overall reaction, if we were to squash this all together, it's nice and easy here. That's why I've done this one. Two electrons, two electrons. So basically we've got um, magnesium plus copper ions. Should have done the copper ions in blue, of course. What a muppet. Uh, makes uh, magnesium ions and copper atoms. So, as I said earlier on, this is an oxidation. Now, what is getting oxidised there? Well, the magnesium is getting oxidised because it has lost these two electrons. So, logically, that means the copper ions are being reduced. Once again. So, I've sorry, reduced. Reduction. Stop trying to think ahead, hey. After all these years, you know you can't do that. So the copper ions are gaining these two electrons and they're being reduced to form copper atoms. So this is a reduction. So if these guys are getting reduced and these guys are getting oxidized, if you have a look at the equation here, it's, you could consider the situation as if the magnesium is causing the copper to be reduced. And in the process, the magnesium itself gets oxidized. So let me just phrase that again. The magnesium atoms are reacting with the copper ions. So the magnesium atoms are causing the copper ions to gain these two electrons. And in the process of that happening, the magnesium itself gets oxidized. So we could say that magnesium, although it itself gets oxidized, is causing this to be reduced. So we could say that magnesium is a reducing agent for something else. In this case, the copper ions. So the reducing agent is the one that gets oxidised, but it causes something else to be reduced, if you see what I mean by that. If you don't, you can always rewind in the video. Hopefully it's clear the second time. And of course, we can look at it from the other side of the coin. We could say um, that the copper is getting reduced, and at the same time, it's letting the magnet, or it's, it's making the magnesium atoms get oxidised. So the copper ions here that are getting reduced are actually causing this to be oxidised. So these could be called oxidising agents. As, as I said, even though they themselves are getting reduced, but they're causing something else to be oxidised, that's why they're an agent of oxidation. They cause the oxidation in something else. So that's the first higher content, guys. This, this oxidising agents and reducing agents. It's a weird way of looking at it. Um, but the SQA want you to be aware of it. So if there was a question, for example, this one here, if we cover this up, if this question here said, identify the oxidizing agent in this reaction, I personally would find the chemical that's being reduced. I, I think that's one easy way of doing it. There is another easy way of doing it involving this page in the data book, but just in case they're hitting you with things that you've never seen before, um, if you find the chemical uh, that is being reduced, then that must be the oxidizing agent. And, of course, vice versa. If they want the reducing agent, you find the chemical that's being oxidized. Moving on to the next uh, sort of subset of this oxidizing and reducing agents is this here. Now, this is our electrochemical series, which I'm incredibly skillful at just fitting in the frame. Or you could say incredibly jammy at just fitting in the frame. Depends how honest I was feeling. So, um, if you remember from National 5, guys, one of the things you had to do, or, or you had to know from National 5, was that electrons went from the top of this table down to the bottom. So if we had, for example, strontium, metal, it would quite happily react with, say, lead ions. And that was as far as we went. But if you notice what I actually did there, I went from strontium metal, which is on the right-hand side, 
to lead ions, which are on the left-hand side and below it. So the refinement this year is not only do electrons fall down, if you were with me for National 5, I said they fall like a waterfall, you know, from top to bottom, but they actually do a little disco dance move in the process. This only makes sense if you can see me in the classroom, of course. Um, I'm throwing some shapes in the style of 70s dance moves because one hand is pointing up here, one hand is pointing down here, and the electrons actually flow like that. That's the direction the electrons flow in. So, for example, electrons could indeed flow from zinc atoms here to chromium 3 plus ions. Absolutely. If you had, on the other hand, if you had, say, um, iron atoms and zinc ions, that's a nope. Because that would involve electrons flowing uphill, which isn't going to happen. So they flow downhill and from left to right. So if we take another example of that, if you had, for example, nickel-2 ions and iron, and now the nickel is above the iron, that's true, but you're not going to get a reaction there because the direction is wrong. That's from left to right. So that is the only way that electrons can flow now in higher. Um, one final thing on this page, just before we leave it behind, and once again, if you're in my class, then I show a ridiculous image on the board uh, of a guy with a bra on top of his head and a feather boa around his neck. Now, although that looks, that sounds it might, might be slightly dodgy in my search history, but it's really innocent because the bra is up here, and the boa is down below here. Now I'm hoping that with a wee bit insight you could maybe realise that's a reducing agent, that's an oxidising agent, and that's the best. In other words, the most powerful reducing agents up here, and the most powerful reducing oxidising agents. Slap your face, hey, down here. Get it right. So that means, like, fluorine is as powerful an oxidising agent as you can get. And if you look at things like bleach and dichromate, uh, they're all down here. Oxygen. All of these things have got something in common, by the way, when you come to run your own house. They are all really useful uh, for health reasons, and we'll come back to that in the very, very near future. So these are all oxidizing agents. These are all reducing agents. And that's how you remember the bra and the boa, and it, the electrons flow from the top right to the bottom left. There are three oddball chemicals that are mentioned specifically by the SQA. Uh, they're not actually, two of them are not actually on this list, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, so you know where that's going to appear, don't you? They're going to hit you with that in a multiple choice question for one mark. They want you to know, although it's not on this list, that carbon monoxide is a good reducing agent. And they also want you to know that hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, so famous for being the hair bleach, although I don't know if that's true anymore, um, is down here, oxidizing agents. So carbon monoxide, CO1, H2O2, um, and they also want you to realize that that's actually the reason why you need to use acidified dichromate. It's not just potassium dichromate, it's got to be acidified dichromate, because if you look at what's needed here, 14 hydrogen ions. We're going to come back to that. I keep saying that twice. There's just one more wee bit on the end of this video, the other bit of new higher content. I'm just about to dispose of one of them. The SQA want you to know that oxidizing agents are super good at doing two things. So any of this bunch here are really good at doing a couple of things. They are good at being antimicrobial. In fact, my fridge boasts a silver ion lining. And if you look here, silver ions are actually down here. Uh, I noticed uh, this is going to age really quickly, but in the days of pandemic, when I was up at ASDA, they were boasting that the trolley handles contain silver ions. And it's true, just for a change. Silver ions are oxidizing agents. They don't burn your skin, but they do kill bugs. How about that? And of course, good old chlorine and bleach. If you want to clean your sinks, that's what's used. Fluorine, don't use that as an oxidizing agent. Okay, because it's the most powerful we can get. Chlorine kills the bugs. Fluorine kills everybody in the room, basically. So uh, oxidizing agents are antimicrobial and they're also physically bleaching. They will destroy the colored molecules in, like, my nice pair of jeans here, which I stupidly managed to get some splatters of bleach on, have gone <laughs> orange instead of black. Um, because the chlorine destroys the coloured molecules in the pigments in the dyes. So, oxidising agents are antimicrobial, spell it right, hey? And they are also physical bleaches of colour. Great.
That's actually why chlorine is in bleach. It does two for the price of one. Kills the bugs and also removes stains. And the very last part, guys, is um, what's called building up ion electron equations from scratch. Um, the SQ want you to be able to build your own ion electron equations outside of the ones that are on this page. Um, so let's start with, they give you a hint by the way, they always give you a hint because they give you what you start with and what you end up with. And let's try and make one up. Again, chemistry teachers, please don't shout at me. I know this is possibly not right. Um, so you start with that and you end up making that. So there are four stages to this. One of my pupils uh, is an expert at these four stages at Melbourne here. Um, the first stage is to balance the non-oxygen element. I decided life was too short to make me watch you write it all out. Here you go. Balance the non-oxygen element. Balance oxygen by adding waters. Balance the hydrogens that you've now added with hydrogen ions. And then lastly, add electrons to make sure that the charge, total charge on one side is the same as the total charge on the other side. That can be tricky because people miss out the multipliers. You'll see just exactly what I mean. Let's do this, as the phrase goes. Number one, balance the non-oxygen element, which is sulfur. There are two sulfurs here. There's only one here, so we need two of these guys. Oxygens. You now have three on this side and eight on that side. So therefore, we're going to require to add five waters to this side. Number three, balance the hydrogens. We've just added ten hydrogens here, so we're going to have to have ten Hydro oh my goodness. This is the problem of having no video editing software. Ten hydrogen ions on this side. Lastly, add electrons to balance the charge on both sides. This is the trickiest part here. Two minus, no multiplier, no charge. So just two minus. This side here, two times two is four minus, and ten plus gives you six plus. So we are going to need to add, you can pause the video hopefully and tell me how many electrons on which side. So we're going to need four, uh, we're going to need, sorry, more than that in fact, two minus, we're going to need to add uh, eight electrons in fact. And we're going to need to add them to this side here to bring that charge down from six plus all the way down to two minus. So we're going to need to add eight electrons on that side. So it turns out that the overall reaction here is S2O3 plus 5 waters makes 2 SO4s and 10 hydrogen ions and 8 electrons. And just nicely to take me back to the very first, if you remember what I said now, if the electrons are on the right of the arrow, then this is a oxidation. That is an oxidation reaction. And we're done. So, quick recap on that. Okay, a recap on that. It's difficult stuff and there's a lot of it. I can see why one or two people were wanting a video on this. Then 5 recap is just identifying oxidation and reduction by the side of the arrow the electrons are on. Also squashing together a couple of... Um, uh, sorry, squashing together an oxidation and a reduction to get the overall redox reaction, as it's called. And cancelling out the electrons and anything else that might need cancelling. Then we moved on to higher content. The higher content is all about oxidizing agents and reducing agents and how to recognize them, where you find them on the electrochemical series. Also, the fact that electrons don't just flow top to bottom, they flow right to left, um, if you want a successful reaction, that is. And lastly, that you are able to build up your own ion-electron equations step by step in a four-step process. Thank you for listening, folks. Bye-bye.